It is 3 a.m. I should probably go to bed, but I really want to record this commentary, so let's do this. So today, welcome to today's Careful Space Program video. As you can see, we're now throttling up the engines, turning on the SRPs, and there we go into the air because today we are going to be doing a 100% fully reusable space shuttle system. As you can probably tell, those SRBs look a little bit different. They look a little bit more, have more engines, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, it's 3 a.m., guys. So I'm sorry. Gonna, probably going to be losing it a little bit today, but either way, uh, we are now starting our pitch over maneuver now. Just to, you can see the vectors kind of going crazy with the gimbal there uh, as the thing pitches over. I did a five meter external tank just because it looks a little more realistic, and I did flags to get the orange color on it. So, uh, yeah, so fully reusable space shuttle is today's mission plan. Um, obviously, the SRBs are going to be the first thing that we that we recover, and you can probably see part of our our, our, <laughs> our recovery system for the SRBs. We're going to be possibly landing them with engines. One another challenge I did, just kind of an arbitrary challenge, we are doing absolutely zip zero parachutes on this thing because parachutes are for plebs and I am superior being who only does propulsive landings because they are cool. So there is SRB separation and we can go ahead and get SRB cam right about now and we will go back to the uh, the main shuttle uh, in just a second after we watch our SRBs land. So here is SRB cam. We are going to deploy the air brakes, and this thing is going to come in kind of backwards, kind of counterintuitive. But the way that they de when the way that they deploy basically uh, is very difficult to get them to flip around. So uh, they're going to be coming down backwards, and we have some six radially mounted thud engines, uh, which are going to be um, going to be how we do our our landing burn with these things. We, the Delta V margin is extremely, extremely thin on these things because the only way, the, the way, the fuel that we're getting is from the little nose cone, the little nose cone adapter you could see on the thing uh, earlier in the thing. Uh, it's the only place we have fuel based uh, on this thing. Obviously, the solid fuel, but that's all, all drained, obviously, and thuds don't run on solid fuel, you know, big surprise. Um, so uh, that is going to be, it's going to be a challenge. We Both of these have under 50 meters a second uh, when they land, but we are now getting ready to light up the landing burns. And there they go, basically at the exact same time. Look at the right-hand boot just started a little bit earlier. Both starting to reduce their speed for a very, very, very perfect cover slam. Hopefully landing legs coming out on the both of them. Starting to uh, get really close to the ground and... Touchdown! I was basically at the exact, literally the exact same time, and they, they, uh, they totally didn't, um, they totally didn't tip over after landing, guys. That totally didn't happen. See, they didn't, right? They perfectly landed. And here we are watching our, our main stage get into orbit. Our stage, or external tank, well, the shuttle getting into orbit, so... Um, the next piece that we have to recover is going to be the orange tank, which actually I think I have a really cool recovery system. It's the most, one I'm most proud of. It worked the best. The, the SRBs are an absolute pain. They were flippy. They were, the Delta B, like I said, was super close. And uh, the, the orange tank just worked because the orange tank is just so massive. It has just all the fuel in it. Um, quickly like to do the quick plugs because while we have a second here, while this thing getting into orbit. So uh, if you hate the plugs, I don't know, go 20 seconds in the video. Uh, member, become a member, comment, like, join my Discord, subscribe. Um, uh, Patreon, plugs, okay, plugs, awesome plugs, I don't know, watch the whole video, that'd be a great thing to thank you, you must do it, you must listen to all my plugs, uh, you don't have to, obviously, if you, if you do like the content, you know, yeah, no, either way, so, um, like I said, we're now getting into orbit, um, this orange tank was not very cooperative, I don't know what the deal is, if it was something about, uh, the flags causing weird drag, or probably just the orange tank being so heavy because it has literally so much fuel in it. Uh, but those vectors, just for the life of them, could not deal with it. Um, they were really struggling. We could not throttle it all, all the way up, because if we throttled it all the way up, um, the, the power of the vectors would just, would just flip the thing over, because it would have so much, thr so much offset thrust. So we have full RCS, and we can really only throttle the vectors to two-thirds maximum. So, uh, I don't, yeah, it, it, it really struggled to get into orbit. But we do make it eventually, and with enough fuel to, uh, to land the orange tank. But what can we do while we are waiting for this thing to get into orbit? While we are very patiently waiting, uh, we could do a water review. Water review time. Who is ready? Ready? Ready. Wow. Who is ready for some water review? Now, mind the clicking sound while I get my water review thing turned on here. We are doing Arrowhead water today for today's water review. Yes. Arrowhead water. I have very fond memories of Arrowhead water. It was one of the first bottled waters I have ever drank. Arrowhead water is sourced from sand, the San Bernardino Mountains and is owned by Nestle. So if you're a fan of Nestle, if you're I think they're French, so I don't know if you like French stuff, but also not because I think this is an American brand. I don't even know um, if it also isn't American, but Arrowhead Water. It has kind of a cool bottle. It looks like mountain stuff. It looks oh so so refreshing, 
so refreshing. This this may be my second favorite bottled water arrowhead, because where I am, there's a lot of arrowhead local. It's, it's, it's my first memory of bottled water was an arrowhead bottle, so it, it is it gives a nice place in my heart as we can, there we go, uh, separate the orange tank now, and we can get ready to watch our orange tank we enter and land. So, so arrowhead is a solid, I think in, out of all the water we've reviewed, arrowhead, we've done, we've done uh, Dasani, Fiji, Arrowhead now and Aquafina and Smart Water. I think Arrowhead is gonna take second place right below Aquafina. So pretty good stuff going for Arrowhead. And here we go. We have inflated our heat shield, which is at the bottom of our orange tank, which is why the orange tank looked so weird because it had heat shield down there. And then the way, well, how are we gonna land though? We can't just land on a heat shield. You know, we would very much blow up. So what is going to be our method of landing? You will see very, very shortly. But I think it is quite Kerbal indeed. So here we go. Gonna drop the thing down to one time speed and gonna go there we go we have some engines that just basically blast the heat shield away and there's a little fairing that the engines are hiding in so they deployed and here come the engines loads of Delta V to land with very controllable we have four vector engines which are gonna come and bring us in for a nice little landing there we go and I like it's cool you see like the dust as it uh, as it clears as the <laughs> there goes the heat shield just crashing down and that is most of our mission complete but there is still one more important thing to do which is a to deploy our payload so we need to quick burn with the ohms thrusters and then we can crossfade to the payload deployment what is our payload today it is a mini space station because very original idea i couldn't think of much so mini space station this is like a, like a gateway station but for low curb i don't know if you're on a very long mission, it's a place you can just go stop and hang out. I don't know what, how, if like, <laughs> you know, if, if you're, if you're on like a, if you're on like a one year, if you're on like an eight month Duna glide, you know, fly on out to Duna, you probably don't need, if you need a rest after the first 10, like the first 10 minutes, if it's where you're getting into orbit, the time you're spending in low curb and orbit, you know, you're probably gonna have a hard time. I don't know if I'm even making sense, but now we're gonna do it with the shuttle and land the shuttle because, you know, fully reusable, got to fully reuse it. We actually land the shuttle in a really cool place. So you know, stay tuned, right? Um, so we are deorbiting now, and we can start our shuttle reentry. My original plan was to bring this thing back to the desert runway, but as I was approaching the desert runway, I noticed something very interesting, something something amazing caught my eye, guys. As uh, as we can descend here, now you can see that the reentry heating there. You can go do a little almost to bounce off the atmosphere. I don't think we quite go back up, but here we go. Uh, the desert runway is just to our left-hand side, so I'm going to start thinking about maneuvering towards the desert runway. You can kind of see it uh, just off the tip of our left wing, uh, just on the left side of those mountains there. As I start to turn um, to, uh, to line myself up with the desert runway, something, oh, something catches me eye. If you look in the bottom right-hand side of the screen, just above the Kerbal's faces, you can see something. What is that? A uh, Easter egg. It's the Temple Easter egg. I had absolutely no idea that was right next to the desert airfield. I have never. I have. This is the first time I have like naturally stumbled across the Easter egg in KSP. So, you know, I have thousands of hours in this game, and I, I've never just found an Easter egg by accident. Unlike now, which I have. I guess I've kind of found the Monarch. A A Mon That doesn't count. Monarches are giant. And curved mun is not that big, so I, I found it, and here we are. We're coming in for a landing on the, by the temple, because you know, here we go now, guys. Going to come in for like a little trench run type approach, going an interesting kind of way to way to fly around here. So totally didn't get this first try. You probably saw a weird uh, crossfade earlier. There will be a quick, there will be a little crash montage after at the end of the video here in just a few seconds. So stay tuned for that. And here we are now, coming and landing. Legs, our gear are out, and. Touchdown, Tango Delta, as they would say in the, in the amazing people land. But here is the temple or the, the pyramid. I don't know if that lift isn't really a pyramid. It's like a temple thing. It's awesome. It is amazing. Easter egg.
All right, so that is going to bring us to the end of today's video. On screen right now, you can see a list of all of the members on the channel. Members, if you want to become a member, you can hit the join button. And now you can see all the Patreons. I have a few Patreons there to thank you all, you guys, for becoming Patreons. Uh, if you do look to want to support the channel, Patreon may be a better way just because the Patreon takes a little bit smaller cut than YouTube. But uh, that's going to be the end of today's video. So I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please remember to comment to the video. And again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.